Welcome back. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to I'm, we're going to take a look at an enzyme called and by the way this is not one of your traditional complexes but it's electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase and you usually don't talk about this complex and it's a shame because I want to be clear on one thing most people and even I, I was this way for a while too until I really got into the biochemistry but most people assume that all the FADH2s that are produced because there's a lot of enzymes that produce FADH2 most people assume that all of those FADH2s enter at succinate dehydrogenase and that is not true. That is not true. The succinate dehydrogenase FADH2 is the only FADH2 that enters in that way. So is it kind of stupid that they call that complex 2? Yeah, I think this one should be called complex 2 because all the other FADH2s that are produced, every other one enters at this enzyme. And Having said that, that makes this enzyme actually sort of, um, you know, in a sense, more important because there's 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 more enzymes that produce FADH2 than just succinate dehydrogenase. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this enzyme, and the reason is because mechanistically the electron transfers are identical to succinate dehydrogenase. So let's say I have some generic molecule. Let's say I have um, a molecule that is reduced and let's say I'm going to oxidize it and remember there are many enzymes that do this well the ultimate electron except, uh, electron acceptor or the oxidizing agent is going to be FAD and so you're going to get FADH2 and in the last video we looked at the structures of FAD and FADH2 so if you need to go back and review that you can certainly do that but right here I'm just going to draw it simplistically so the FAD is going to oxidize some molecule in an enzymatic reaction, so this is catalyzed by some enzyme. And the FADH2 that's produced is going to come into the respiratory chain. So this is going to come into the respiratory chain, and it's going to enter at this enzyme. So it's going to enter at this enzyme. It's going to enter at this enzyme and essentially what's going to happen is the FADH2 is going to get oxidized and the FADH2 is going to get oxidized by transferring its electrons again to an iron sulfur center it's going to transfer it to an iron sulfur center right and this is going to go through a series of iron sulfur centers and if you need help on this go back and watch the other videos I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here but there's a series of iron sulfur centers and they shuttle or they, they, they cycle between ferrous and ferric states right so I reduce that and just like the other two enzymes succinate dehydrogenase and NADH dehydrogenase the ultimate goal of this enzyme is to reduce ubiquinone to ubiquinone. If you need to see the structure of that, you can certainly watch the other videos. We drew it there. But what have I done? Well, I've, I've ultimately increased the concentration of ubiquinol. And like I've mentioned before, this is going to go towards complex 3. And complex 3 has a special name. It's it's cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase. And ultimately this complex 3, and I'll kind of draw it like this so you know it's complex 3, is going to ultimately reduce ubiquinol back to ubiquinone. And in the process, cytochrome C, which was originally oxidized, is going to get reduced to cytochrome C in the reduced form. And and, and specifically, it's going to accept one electron at a time, and we'll, we'll look at the mechanism of how it does that. But for now, just understand that electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase is ultimately, um, it's ultimately transferring electrons to um, iron sulfur centers. And let me be perfectly clear. Essentially, there is... Um, there is 
an electro there's a, there's an electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase, but there's also just a simple electron transferring flavor protein. So what I want to be perfectly clear about is is this. Let me do this in a different color. The electron transferring flavor protein, not the not the oxidoreductase, but the electron transferring flavor protein is actually what's transferring um, the F is what's transferring the electrons from the molecule itself from the from the reduced molecule to the FADH2. So the actual transfer of electrons is occurring via an electron transferring flavor protein. So those those electrons that move from the reduced molecule to FAD that is occurring through an electron transferring flavor protein. So let me let me draw it like this so to help you better understand it. So I have a reduced molecule, right? I have a reduced molecule. Well, the electrons from that molecule are going to ultimately move to an electron transferring flavor protein, right? They're going to move to an electron transferring flavor protein, and specifically, it's two electrons, right? It's two electrons because there's two being uh, transferred from the oxidation. And what I want to be perfectly clear about is the electron transferring flavor protein is a flavor protein, so it's dependent on FAD. So these electrons, these electrons, these two electrons are ultimately going to FAD and are going to generate FADH2. So in other words, the prosthetic group for the electron transferring flavor protein is FAD and it gets reduced to FADH2. Then, then those electrons, then those electrons, those two electrons, then they get transported to electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase and in the process that's where they get transported to this enzyme's FAD prosthetic group. And of course that reduces it to FADH2. So you can sort of view it, so these electrons ultimately go to the electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase is FADH2. So what I've drawn up here is sort of a simplistic version of it. But whatever, so, so basically there's an enzyme that's going to reduce or it's going to oxidize some molecule and the electrons are going to travel to electron transferring flavor protein, which is an FAD protein. And those electrons are going to ultimately then be shuttled to electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. And essentially what the electron transferring flavor protein is, it's like an electron shuttle. It's basically an intermediate sh that's shuttling electrons between some molecule, um, some molecule, and the electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion. This is not fact, but I think this should really be called complex two because it, it's more important in getting most of the FADH2 into the electron transport chain at least in terms of the number of enzymes, because there's many enzymes that are FADH2 dependent enzymes. And so this is ultimately how you get these, um, these electrons into the respiratory chain. So let, let's regroup a little bit. So um, the, some molecules are going to get oxidized by an enzyme, and the electrons go to the electron transferring flavor protein. And then those electrons get shuttled to electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase, and they get put onto, those electrons get put onto FAD to make FADH2. To make FADH2, and that FADH2 is this FADH2. And then those electrons get transferred to a series of iron sulfur centers, very similar to the way succinate dehydrogenase work. And then the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal, and I'll do this in another color just to, I want to be perfectly clear, is to reduce ubiquinone to ubiquinol. So we have reduced coenzyme Q, and as we'll see, it goes to complex three to carry out the rest of its physiology. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at complex three, and as we'll find, it's actually the most difficult complex to understand, and I'll do my best to help you understand it. See you in the next video.